In the heart of Oman's capital city of Muscat is a course that offers seclusion from this modern Middle Eastern city. Gala Golf Club is the nation's oldest golf club and with the help of Oman's golf-loving Sultan has been given a new lease of life. Originally a sand course, Gala now boasts 18 holes of lush fairways and greens. Uh, the course itself was made in 1971. Originally it was a sand course. This area here was brought to us by His Highness Said Kais bin Tarak Al Said. He found the area uh, and basically turned it into a sand course from there because he was basically a passion, passionate about golf. He loved golf and he was a real spirit towards it of being able to create what we are today. Well, the setting is very, um, very special here in Oman. All the golf courses are completely different from each other and uh, this golf course in particular has uh, the structure to build in the valley. So we're having here the whole golf course building into the valley, uh, which has a really nice layout and is very special. It started as a sand course, but uh, during the summer with the sand, it's very hot to play. But our members really enjoyed playing here on the sand course. Well, inspired the change was a passion, basically. Uh, people living in Oman tended to go down to Dubai to play grass and come down. Muscat Hills was the first one that opened. And once that opened, it started a snowball effect, if you will to the other courses. This one here was grasped by His Excellency Dr. Rumi at the time. Basically, he took it upon himself and decided, well, if musket hills can be grass, why can't we grass this? The transformation from brown course to green course has been massive and is a big change for how the members played gala through its first 39 years. So just five years ago, this golf course was completely covered in sand. And we have a few of these back home. We call them sand scrapes. So I'm gonna show you how it's done. You mark the ball a little bit differently with an arrow, then you use the comb side down and rake back towards the hole on the line that you think your putt's gonna take. Flip the rake over, use the smooth side back to where your ball was, and then it's just a matter of replacing your ball, hopefully rolling in your putt. Now with lush grass and palm trees set against the original rock walls and sand, Gala feels like an oasis in the heart of Muscat. Perhaps the coolest thing about Gala Golf Club is that it sits in this massive valley and there's these two incredible rock walls just surrounding the entire property. It gives it this real amphitheater feel and considering how close it is to Muscat, it still feels really peaceful. Time to get the lay of the land and check out Gala's feature holes with a little advice from Milo. This is the par four sixth hole, and I've got to say, it's a pretty incredible setting. There's very few places in the world where you feel like you can bounce it off a mountain range and still hit the fairway. I think personally uh, tricky about this golf course is that we have very narrow fairways. We have uh, a lot of sand, so this is really a uh, difficult part, I would say so, to play it um, off the dunes. Milo was keen to show off Gala's brand new 18th hole, a source of pride for its members. So Milo, why have you brought me to the 18th hole? Because this is uh, our signature hole here, having a beautiful view towards the clubhouse. And uh, we have a really nice featuring hole here with the water right next to it, to the clubhouse. So you think I'm going to hit it in the water? Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, I hope so not. Uh, if you're reaching the first shot 350 yards, you might end up in the water. But I th assume that you're not hitting it that far. Yeah, it's just a little uh, bit out of my range. Yeah. Yes, a little bit out of your range. <laughs> but you should be doing fine. Just make a normal shot as you normally do. Just hit it straight towards the fountain there. Oh yes, that could it be. With a nice fade in there. Excellent plate in the middle of the fairway. Well, thank you, Mario. I'm quite surprised actually about that. <laughs> the first shot. Ooh. Hopefully not in the water. Great shot. Really nice. I've got about 120 to the pin, but Milo has absolutely smashed his drive. No breath of a lie, that water's 350 yards off the tee and his ball's in it. I might give him a free drop if I'm feeling generous, but we'll see how this shot goes first. <laughs> Any advice from here, Milo? We have uh, two bunkers here now protecting the screen. Be careful, you make sure you're clearing the water. The pin position is at the front of the green, so I would recommend for you just hit a little bit past the hole. Then you're on the safe side. That would be great. Oof. Talk about the details. All right, just as Milo said. <laughs> oh, 
no. Oh, you are very lucky. <laughs> I cannot believe it. But the result is exactly the same, I told you. Well I done. think that's what we call a member's bounce, folks. So I better go pay my green fees. <laughs> Now, Milo, I can't possibly give you a penalty after hitting a good shot off the tee and my luck hitting the rocks next to the green and bouncing onto the green. So we'll say that this ball's lying too, OK? OK, good much luck. appreciated. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's close. see how it goes. Yeah, nice shot. Thank you. Just a little bit past the hole. I think you know what you're doing, don't you? Yes. Well, knowing my luck right now, this might actually go in. You will make it. <laughs> don't leave it short. Giddy up. It's not that quick. Wrong postcode. It's not my finest effort. I've left the door open for you. Yes. Hopefully I will make it. Yeah. Well, or hopefully you won't. Either way. <laughs> Looks a little right to left to me. Oh, no. Oh, come on. All right, fine. Shame on me for giving the free drop. Little did I know he'd go and hold apart. Thank oh, you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank but you very uh, much. Now the drinks are on you. <laughs> okay. Gala is Oman's oldest golf club, and I'm keen to find out more about its vibrant membership, a true reflection on the city of Muscat. We have members from India, we've got members from England, from Singapore, from Malaysia, from Australia as well. I mean, even myself, I'm Fijian and I'm sitting here at Gala. People come here for a good time. They come here, they have a fantastic golf course, but they have the social atmosphere is what Muscat really is after. People in Muscat love to have a social time, love to see everybody, and it's a family-oriented place. The atmosphere is the social life and that's what makes this club. Gala Golf Club offers a real slice of golfing life in the Sultanate of Oman. The beauty about this country, you have a totally different environment, for example, to Dubai. Um, you can do so many things here in Oman. You can travel around, you can go to the desert, you can go to the mountains, you can go to the Jebel Akhtar. The people are extremely friendly here, which I really like, and uh, the life is very special. In Oman, you're going to get a local experience. You're going to get an Oman experience. We want to give the tourists an experience of coming in, playing in Oman, having that Omani culture, and walking away with a feeling of saying, yes, that's one thing I'll have to come back and do again. I've had a brilliant day here at Gala Golf Club. And being Oman's oldest golf course, it's got a really sociable clubhouse culture. From the golf side of things, you want to make sure you're hitting it pretty straight, though, because some of those fairways are pretty narrow. And look at that backdrop, absolutely stunning mountains. I think I'm going to head for the hills. Just one and a half hours from Muscat is Nizwa, one of the oldest cities in Oman. Once a centre for trade, religion and art, that tradition continues today. This is the Nizwa cattle market, and I've got to say, out of everywhere I've gone in the world, this is one of the most unique experiences I've ever had. I've just had a goat walk over my foot, which, I mean, usually doesn't happen so close to the city. What happens is the goats are paraded around the centre of the circle by, by handlers, I guess you'd call them. The owners, they give them to the handlers, and then the handlers walk around trying to get the best price from the highest bidder. They go back to the owner, say, is this good enough? And then either a deal's made or a deal isn't made, and they come back next Friday. The handlers get 2%, and the government gets 4% of the sale. There's literally every type of breed you could imagine here. And when the goats are done, the cows, they start coming around, and I can only imagine what that's going to look like. <laughs> I think this thing's the John Daly of the cattle market. He's just gone for 700 real, which works out to about 2,500 NZ. He's massive. More souks or markets remain to be explored, where I'm keen to take in the sights, sounds, smells and tastes of Oman. This is halwa, which is an Omani delicacy, and I think the best way to describe it, it looks like a caramel jelly, and apparently it's got nuts, some saffron, and maybe a few spices in it. Not quite sure what to expect, but there's only one way to find out. All right. Mm. It's a lot fruitier than you'd expect. That's quite nice texture. 
Don't know what everyone else is having, but this one's mine. <laughs> Next stop, the Nizwa Fort, Oman's most visited national monument and one of over 600 forts throughout the Sultanate. Masood, we're in the Nizwa Fort and there's tons of these holes all over the ground. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on here? Right, OK. Actually, there are different holes for different purposes, actually. Like this hole that we have here. If the fort got attacked by the invaders, the soldiers up here, they'll be boiling oil or syrup, and then they'll pull it from this point here to the, on the invaders there. So the invaders will sleep and they'll fall on the traps there where they get uh, killed afterward. This fort is a bit sturdier than the one I used to build in my lounge as a kid, and the views over the city of Nizwa are pretty spectacular too. Back in Muscat, my action-packed day isn't over yet. The Shangri-La Bar Al Jissa Resort combines three hotels, with the family-friendly Al Waha Hotel and the five-star Al Bandar Hotel offering plenty of fun in the Omani sun. Both hotels lead onto a 500 metre beach where you can take a dip in the turquoise waters of the Sea of Oman. The Shangri-La boasts two pools and the 500 metre lazy river that meanders through the Oasis Garden from the Al Waha to the Al Bandar Hotel and back again. If you've been out on the golf course all morning and you feel like chilling out a little bit, the lazy river's the place for you. No stay at Bar Al Jissa is complete without getting out on the golf. Now, when I'm not on the golf course, I love a bit of fishing, and there's no better place to do that than Oman. This place is brimming with sea life. You can catch tuna, mackerel, or even a kingfish out here. I'm having as much luck landing fish as I've had draining birdies on this trip, but all the more reason to come back to my favourite new destination. Like you, I wasn't sure what to expect from Oman, but I have to say this has honestly been one of the most surprising and incredible trips I've taken anywhere in the world. The people here are so friendly. This scenery is stunning. But if you're wondering why I've got these golf clubs on the beach with me, I've got one more thing to do on my bucket list. Well, I've got 190 yards, I've got three wood in hand, and not surprisingly, the wind's coming off the ocean. So what do you think, maybe right edge of the hole? Oh, be good. Be good. Yes! Talk about a cliffhanger ending. Next week on Holden Golf World, I'm in the Golden Hills near Nelson for a Razine Kiwi Clubhouse makeover. Hey. Yay! Thanks, thanks so well, thanks. much. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Governor. Plus, Ryan Fox shares a tip from the Holden Clubhouse.